I want to use this video to talk about a sports reporter, sports commentator, a sports anchor, who really motivated me to dive in the sports commentating world. Like, I really miss Stuart Scott, y'all. Like, I really miss Stuart Scott. I was inspired through and through for many, many years since I was a little boy by Stuart Scott. Stuart was groundbreaking. He was a trendsetter. He brought the culture of cool to ESPN to me. He really brought the, fla the like the black flavor. That black inner city flavor, he brought it to ESPN and did it unapologetically. He was himself through and through. Made catchphrases like booyah and cool it in the other side of the pillow popular and had everybody at the edge of their seats. When he was doing when he was anchoring, everybody just wanted to tune in to see what Stewart was going to say next. How he, how would he um present a game winning shot? How would he deliver um a game winning drive in in football? How would he deliver that? And he did it time and time again in a profound way, and it seemed effortless. It seemed like he was just such a natural. Like, I remember when he was talking about Ray Allen, right? And he was like, you know, at the Black Family, at the black family reunion in our families, families, we got Pookie now. What is Ray Ray now? Talking about Ray Allen when Ray put up like 50 points one time. And it was ridiculous, and it was like something to marvel at. But, man, Stewart, man, I, I really love Stewart. Stewart was a breath of fresh air. And um, he was the consummate professional. Like, he was a true professional at his job. He did everything. He went above and beyond. And um, he stood out in such a major way, man. He was, he's an icon for me. Because as a young black boy, to see him on TV, being himself and not have to... I mean, of course, you can be professional. But he wasn't, like, trying to not be himself. Trying to be something that would be more acceptable to the masses. He like, nah, what's up? Booyah, cool it in the other side of the pillow. He was talking, using all the slang that we would use in the inner city communities and bringing it to TV and making it acceptable. Like, you're going to love me for who I am. And he did it time and time again, man. And it was like, he was so entertaining. Such a good person. Seemed like such a genuine soul. And I used him as motivation. Like, I want to be like that guy. That guy does everything. He knows about all different sports. He can comment. He can do baseball, football. He can do basketball. He, he like he he just was able to do so many different things. Whether it be golf, he could do all different type of things. And I was like, man, you know, I want to be smart like that, brother. I want to be um, as cool and, and, and buttoned up like that, brother. I wanted to, I wanted to be professional like him, and I wanted to love my job the way he loved his job. Like, Stu like, really, Stuart put himself, he put his heart and soul into his work. And you could tell, man, like, when he was like when he was anchoring, man, it was just something about it. The flavor he brought was just, it was it brought, a, it, it brought so much more swag to ESPN. And I started to, to see other reporters started to, like, use some of what he was doing, right? They would start using his flavor and try to present it in that type of way to bring a hip-hop in a city swagger. To ESPN. It was reporters that I saw. It was white reporters that didn't even grow up in inner city communities that was taught like using some of uh, Stewart's flavor, his swag, and, and bringing it to the masses, like for real. And um, he created like, the culture of cool, I think, to, that allowed other black reporters at the time to say, you know what? I can still be myself and be professional. I can still come in here. And, and I can give a, a, a broadcast, I can anchor in a professional way, but I can still bring that flavor to make it interesting, to, to make it pop. And I can do it and, and be really good at it. And Stuart was great at his job, man. Seriously, when Stuart Scott passed away, like Stuart passed away the day before my birthday. I think it was January 5th, no, January 4th. My birthday is January 5th. I think Stuart died on like a Jan on January 4th or something like that, man. And, um... It rocked me to the core because, again, I grew up, like, idolizing Stewart. Seriously, I grew up idolizing Stewart, and I was just, like, such a fan of his work, man. Also, a guy that was, um, when did he pass away? Yeah, January 4th, 2015, he passed away, man. Had his left his beautiful daughters here, you know, and, again, Stewart was so courageous in his battle with cancer. Man, it, it, I don't know, man. When he, when Stewart left ESPN, ESPN really got it changed 
And um, it really felt his his departure, his untimely departure. Seriously, man. Stewart, it was just something special about that brother. It was something special about him. And, and I really, really was like, man, it, it rocked me. Because I like, man, I, I love Stewart. I loved how he presented the news. I love the way he, I don't know, I just love everything the way he did. It's just the way that he would present the news to the public. Sports news. It was like, it was unmatched, man. Unmatched. And again, man, like, I miss that, brother. I really do, man. Like, I, I, And when I got on radio in college, I was myself. I was able to be confident and being myself because I watched through it. Do it time and time again. Still be professional, but still be yourself. Look, I'm going to crack some jokes. I'm going I'm to make some references to, to movies. Make some references to, to music that I listen to. I'm going to quote some stuff my grandmama used to say, like Shannon Sharp does now. All of that. Like, I'm going to do those things and not be afraid to do it and not be afraid that people aren't going to accept me for who I am and not going to love me. Stuart was like, look, I'm going to do what I do and I'm going to make y'all love me for what I do. And love Tim is what we did. We love that brother, man. Shout out. And he's a brother of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, a fraternity within the Divine Nine of the Black uh, Greek letter organizations. I'm a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, but man, it was Stewart was special, man. He had his like his he 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 had his own little signature on everything that he did. And I heard, I remember when he couldn't see well, and he would just remember the scripts or something like that. I remember somebody saying something like that. He would remember the scripts and remember what he was gonna say and just run through it and rip through it and kill it. And I'm like, man, that's a professional. That's a pro. That's the guy that loves his job and takes his job seriously, and he doesn't take it for granted. And um, ESPN knew they had a gem. They knew they did. And when, when, he, when he passed away, man, you could, you could feel his departure. But I could see other reporters coming in and, and having bring in, trying to bring a certain uh, sway, uh, excuse me, I'm about to say swaver, a certain flavor, a certain swag. They were trying to present that on TV because... Stuart was the one that let everybody know it was okay to be like that. And, again, man, he was always so entertaining, always so candid, always had a way of... And I remember when they used Stuart Scott when 50 Cent was going up against Kanye. And it was like a head-to-head -head matchup of who could sell the most albums. And it was on 106 in Park. And they had Stuart deliver it like it was a championship fight. Stuart would cover boxing. He had a way, a knack for... Her. For interviewing guys and getting them to open up and getting them to talk and speak with them and make them feel comfortable because he was able to talk to these dudes like he was talking to them like we, like we straight off the block. We back at home. We talking like we shooting the breeze at the family reunion like we talking at our grandmama house. And um, again, man, just a just a just a really, really dope brother. I think Stewart is from North Carolina, born in Chicago, Illinois, but I think he's from North Carolina. I think he went to UNC too. Yeah, went to UNC. So um, this is it's a special dude, man. Special dude. Um, I don't know his the flair that he brought, man. It was a, like that's what his swagger was off the meter. Like it was off the meter, man. Off the meter. Seriously, he was one of he one of the most successful African American sportscasters. And I'm not even just African American. No. He's one of the most successful sportscasters, period. But he brought the African-American swagger to the public and let everybody know, look, it's here to stay. It ain't going nowhere. It is what it is. Get used to it because this is what's going to be popping. Hip-hop culture is pop culture. No, I mean, hip-hop, black culture is the popular culture when I say that. So that culture had everybody intrigued. It brought everybody to their screen and were, they were in, left in awe of what Stuart Scott would do. Stuart was able to talk to all these different celebrities and bring everybody on and have his own pizzazz. So when they was like, damn, like, okay, I'm gonna come on here more. I'm gonna open up a little bit more. Like all of that, man, it, it was dope, man. It was dope. He can keep, but the thing was, Stuart wasn't all playful. He can deliver some serious topics in a way that lets you feel it. You can feel it, you can empathize with it. He would deliver some news that, in, in, in a way that it was just like, man, this dude is brilliant. He is great at what he could do, at what he did. He could have been a news, like he could have been a on, on regular news, everyday news, giving you the hard news.
tools. And you could feel everything he was saying because he put so much emotion into what he was doing, what he was saying, man. For real. Boy, boy, boy. And it was some people that originally resented Stewart. They resented his flair, his vernacular, vernacular that he would use. They, was, they resented some of the stuff that he was doing. But he was like, I don't give a damn. I don't care. You're going to love me. And this, this, this is what it is. ESPN got me here. I'm going to talk the way I want to talk. And I'm going to talk the way I'm comfortable talking. And I'm going to let everybody know, my people know back at home, you can do this on camera. You can do this. I'm going to open up my arms to y'all and, and help y'all recognize that you can be yourself and make it. He ain't care what nobody was saying, hating on him. Oh, they, why he talking like this, talking like that? People grew to love it. I loved it from day one because it was familiar to me. And um, I, I miss Stewart, seriously. I watch ESPN and I'm like, man, if only Stewart was here to cover these topics, to cover Kevin Durant going to um, Golden State, to cover LeBron um, winning this championship in Cleveland, to cover... LeBron going to LA to cover all these different topics that have all these different news that has happened to cover Toronto winning the championship. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine them covering all the the law? Anthony Joshua's loss uh, against Andy Ruiz. To imagine them covering all these different takes, man. It would have been f fantastic, man. Phenomenal. And um, there will never be another uh, Stuart Scott. Never. Seriously. And I remember they said, what they say? Somebody, I'm looking at this, they're saying Jason, uh, Jason Whitlock, old Hayden, shucking and jiving himself, old Hayden Coon self, talking about some, when he criticized um, Stuart Scott, you calling Jay-Z Jigga or something like that, calling it ridiculous and offensive and all that. Bro, if you don't cook, I, 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 see, I just saw this time, I, I, hope, I don't know how true this is, but it, I, I saw this and it made me like, look at him like, yeah. Jason would like a clown. But anyway, man. What about me? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I got a, the, the catchphrase that he would use. He would say, holla. Holla. That, that was popping, man. Stuart was. He was special, man. Special. Really a special guy. Um, what do you say? Holla at a player when you see him in the street. Salute a player. Like, that was. <laughs> Stuart was, man. I, I promise you, man. He had stuff that you. You like man, this dude is, is he he is dope. Still was dope through and through. I'm reading some of the catchphrases. What he would say? Uh, can I get a witness from the congregation? Everybody know the black church, the congregation talking. What he say? Make all the kin folk proud. Pookie, Ray Ray, and Moesha. He said they got him saying that on him, man, for real. You ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the heck up out of here. Still was like he would. Uh, that magic, that flair, he would bring some of the catchphrases we use at Grandmama House again and brought it on TV and made it dope and did it in a way where you felt it like, man, that was dope to use it right there. That was clever to do it like that. It was clever to use it in that type of way, man. He changed anchoring forever on sports shows, man, and this allowed other personalities like Stephen A. Smith to shine bright, like Shannon Sharp to shine bright, like, um... All these different, like when Michael Smith and Jamel Hill had their show, it had them shining bright on their show and using a black flair and black flavor, man. Dope. Rest in peace to the legendary, the iconic, the groundbreaking Stuart Scott. Machiavelli Mills TV. Peace.